Well, welcome to the live stream. It looks like we have audio. Let me know if you are here tonight. Um, so a couple things just to start out. Number one, welcome. Some of you have been on for quite a while asking me questions. I appreciate that. Um, lots going on tonight. I'll give you an overview of what's going to happen here in just a minute. But I want to say welcome. Please put in the, the chat where you're from. I already saw... Uh, we have um, Indy here from Canada, so welcome, Canada. Um, I see Freddie here, but I'm looking, Freddie, you haven't said where you're from yet, so I'll let Freddie do that. Um, Heps, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce that name. If that's your name, the spelling, um, welcome, and um, I'm just looking to see anybody else is in here. So tonight... I want to say, if you like the, if you like this live series every Tuesday, please like. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I'm sure you, most of you have probably subscribed. That's how you're getting the notices. But the only way to let other people know that I am live every Tuesday is to share it with other people. And um, so you can copy the link and put it on your social media and invite people. I did that today on some of my social media, inviting people. So hopefully people will show up tonight. And so I just want to welcome you. Let me turn my phone down here um, so I don't have to listen to the replay. So um, we're going to do a couple things tonight, right? We are going to talk about the Roadcaster Pro. You saw it in the still image. It's the audio centerpiece in my studio. And we're going to talk about the things that surround it. I'm also going to show you kind of my process using Adobe software, Adobe Premiere, what I'm doing with audio. So tonight's focus is going to be on audio. Also, we have a sneak peek to lesson three of the HyperDeck series, and I have an announcement about when that's going to release if you haven't figured that all out yet. Um, so I'll be talking about it. So if you already know, don't let it loose in the comments, guys. So I will tell you when the HyperDeck series is going to launch. Um, a few weeks ago, I had I kind of focused on the HyperDeck, and I had a comment saying that I didn't really get to the topic until 22 minutes into the video, and uh, I apologize. Obviously, that's 22 minutes, counting the seven, eight minutes pre-roll. Um, so it was 15 minutes before I got in there. I did um, talk about some things that I had purchased that night, but I want to make sure we get to the Rodecaster Pro uh, as soon as possible tonight. So get your questions ready about the Rodecaster Pro. I may not be able to answer all of them tonight in the question and answer. Um, I do want to be off the air tonight at 515, and we're gonna, you're going to find out why later. So again, I want to welcome you to the live stream. Please let me know. Sh shout out in the, in the comments. Let me know you're here. Again, hang on to those questions. We're going to have a Q&A at the end tonight. I do want to get into the Rodecaster Pro I want to give you a quick tour of the studio here using my iPhone. So I'm going to be using mix effects to make some transitions tonight. And that's going to be on my iPad. So I have mix effects opened. Thank you, um, Adam Tao, for being on the live stream. He was on Aaron Parecki's live stream on Sunday morning. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. Again, I felt very privileged. Adam would be here tonight, but he's on a, a live stream right now. I told him I was going to be doing everything with mix effects as much as I possibly can. Obviously, the Rodecaster Pro is uh, is a mixing console. So let's talk about it real quickly. Um, with the Rodecaster Pro is a podcasting tool that Rode came out with. I think it's been out for almost two years now. Um, I was running a recording studio prior to moving into this house. And in reality, about the last year in that house, my wife moved into the recording studio and I moved upstairs. And um, I stopped recording bands live and started just doing some mixing and some mastering. So up in my house... I had a room, I tore all the sheetrock off the wall. I, um, I uh, added insulation in that interior wall. It had an exterior um, wall as well, which those are six inches um, thick. And then the walls in our houses here, at least in the state of Washington, they're uh, two by four thick. And so I needed to do some isolation in that wall. Then I did um, what they call hat channel and isolation brackets. And um, one of these days, we'll talk about how to soundproof. And there's a difference between um, handling the sound in your room because things bounce off the walls and 
There's a difference between actually handling how sound gets through walls, how it bounces off of walls. And so that room was a mastering room upstairs. I had very high-end conversion, um, so converters. So I had an interface um, that was uh, a very high-end interface, about $3,000 retail, and it was eight channels, and it had um, some great features, high, high-end conversion. And if you don't know anything about audio, don't worry about it. But so I went from that to this house, and I still had that rack. I still had those interfaces. But as we decided to open up this room, um, it originally was a man cave. So right against this wall, I had three recliners. One was for my father-in-law, who had had a stroke, and it was a lift chair. I got a lift chair next to that because I was using it as an office chair. So I could lift it up, and I could use my portable keyboard and I had this keyboard, and this attaches to a lap board. I'll show that here, hopefully tonight, if you remind me. And um, on that lap board, I could sit in that chair, and I could operate, and I was using this big TV behind me on that wall. That was our entertainment room. Um, I had uh, a Bose system in here for audio. I also had my JBL studio speakers up. So when I was mixing and mastering, I could use my JBL speakers, and when I was just listening to movies and all that, I would use my Bose surround sound system. And so on this wall right now, on my shelf, um, I didn't talk about this last week, but I have the Bose surround sound still um, on this side of the room, and um, they sit on the shelves um, on this side. And so the shelves were kind of decorative. The chairs could sit right here and we could watch movies. But we felt like with the podcasting going on and my wife's podcast and leaving my former position and coming here, I needed to have a new way of mixing audio live in the room. And so I did my research and I found the Rodecaster Pro. So let's talk about the Rodecaster Pro that I'll show it to you here in just a second with my camera. Um, again, I welcome anybody that's joining me here. Um, Bill, I see you from Chicago. Thank you for letting me know. Um, Venezuela, Freddie, you let them know where you're from. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear where each one of you are that are from. Um, so again, so we went from the man cave, right? And I actually have a sign on my on my door that says man cave. And I felt like I needed to transitioned this room so that we could do live recording, live podcasts. I was taking the Rodecaster Pro and microphones and lights that I have for mobile shooting, and I was setting everything up in our dining room and then having to tear everything down. And so once we dedicated this room, I moved the cameras in here pretty much permanently, and I also put the lights on the wall behind me. So when we're shooting the podcast, I have my higher end lights, and you'll see um, Amazon associate links here attached below for the light boxes and the lights. Those are Godox UL-150s. So the Rodecaster Pro caught my attention as I was doing research because I was looking for something that was like a soundboard that could you could record, and I was trying to figure out how do I do mix minus, and what mix minus is if I have someone call in or come through Skype through my USB from my laptop, Mix Minus is this thing that radio has used for years when they have a call-in guest or a TV station, and it just simply means that we don't send their voice back in the program. They get my voice, they get the stereo sound of I'm playing music, but they don't get their own voice back, so they don't get that, you know, that repetitive echo and feedback that you would normally get. And so the Rodecaster Pro has Mix Minus built into it, they added Mix Minus to the USB channel later um, and um, in a firmware update, and it has four inputs for XLR microphones. So my SM7B by Sure is going into channel one. And channel one has some special features in that I can turn on auto ducking. So if I had someone else on channel two, three, and four, and I have auto ducking on, if I'm the, the speaker of the main person, they, their audio automatically ducks when I have that on. So if I need to talk, it, 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 it takes over most of their audio. So let's, um, let, just so you can see what I'm talking about, let me plug in. Again, I'm using my HyperDeck, um, which we'll talk about later tonight. And I'm plugged into the input with this HDMI cable through a converter because the input on the HyperDeck is SDIN. 
And so I have to convert HDMI and I have a 6G converter because I wanna be able to do up to 4K and record in the HyperDeck, even though I can only broadcast on my ATEM at uh, 1080p up to 60 frames per second, my HyperDeck will record 4K 30 frames per second and it'll record at 422, um, not raw, but pretty high resolution or encoding um, through the HyperDeck. So this I'll plug into my phone right now. And um, right now I have the stream live. So let me turn that off and let me go to, I use uh, Filmic Pro as my tool for using my phone. And so let me just make sure everything's right here. We'll get rid of the mermaid cup. And let's then cut to that camera on my HyperDeck. So I just push record on my HyperDeck and you'll see more of that in my video series. There's gonna be a surprise HyperDeck video that talks specifically about this. That'll come out when all the other ones are released. But so here's my HyperDeck and when I push record, it'll transition to what the input is. So I know you're only seeing my um, face right now, but let me cut to the camera. And so there you have the, the HyperDeck. And when I push record, I'm able to transition to what's on here. And so I can actually uh, cheat here a little bit and um, um, go into super source here. So let me choose this first layout here. And then I'm gonna switch the super source to, do not have a macro for this tonight. So let me go into super source here and I'm gonna switch um, box number two to my HyperDeck. So there you go. So you have me and my HyperDeck. So here's my Rodecaster Pro, and um, it has four inputs. So you can see channel one's up right now, and you can see I have audio. You can also see on channel four that I have um, um, phantom power turned on because this microphone right here, oh, lost the signal. Okay, for a second, I must have moved the cord. But this, little red dot right there is letting me know that I have phantom power and I have an audio technica. It's kind of, it's like a, um, a podium microphone and I I've had it for years. I had it in my studio as a talk over mic. So when I was in the control room and I need to talk to one of the artists in the, in the vocal booth or in the main recording room, I could talk to them through that microphone. So I've hung on to that. And I have that plugged into channel four, the Rodecaster Pro. And I unplug that if I ever have four people in a podcast. And so you have four channels in. Then you have the main USB channel. And you're not getting any audio right now because I have nothing playing on my laptop. But if I had anything playing on the laptop, if I had a video playing in YouTube, and um, if I had a guest on Skype, um, I could actually bring them in the USB channel and their settings up here, uh, which we're not gonna get into tonight, but I'll answer any questions, that I can go in and turn on the USB um, mix, mix effect that stops it from sending, um, mix minus that stops it from sending the voice of the person that I'm interviewing back to them. Now, I'm not doing interviews in Skype. When I did Adam Toe, I used a Zoom and Zoom has that, that feature built into it. But back in the day before there was things like Zoom and all of these new conference softwares, we needed to figure out how to do mix minus and people are struggling with it all the time. Lots of people are trying to buy little mixing consoles, right? Two channel interfaces that were designed to record their voice or record guitar. And they also could record their computer to them and they're trying to use that to do live streaming as well as take in guests. And what they're running into is it doesn't have some of these features built in. And the Rodecaster Pro has it built in. I can also record on any one of these pads. And so my, my intro audio is on this track right here. And if I hit this right now, I have the volume down. But if I brought this up right now, it's gonna come into the show and I can hear it, and you can see the audio coming up there, and I'll bring it back down. So 
I like to be able to play the audio samples. I like to be able to, I can record, like if I wanted to bring in a phone guest an hour before my show, I could record them on a pad and then I could just hit play during my show. So if they weren't available to be on live and I just wanted to play it in a podcast and just put their picture on the screen, which I've done before, I could play that interview and I could take me off the screen and just have his face. Um, so again, you can record to those pads, you can play from those pads, and this is the volume that controls that. The other two really cool features is if I want to play audio from my PC, and here's my PC right here. It's not on right now, but that's my NZXT PC. If I want to play audio from that in my big speakers right here, so here's my JBLs. So that's my right and my left speaker. And then here's my subwoofer. I don't think I've ever showed that before. It's right down here on the floor. And um, so I have that subwoofer and that all comes, the roadcaster sends a signal to my, my HOSA. And this is my HOSA switcher. So one of those channels is input. And then right now I'm on channel three and channel three is the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. And so channel three, when I have that on, right? It comes out of the main output right here. And if I switch that over to channel one, those speakers would come on. And so would my subwoofer. So channel one is my speakers in here. And I don't want those on right now because it would create feedback. So I'm just talking in the mic. I'm watching the levels in this live stream. And I'm not worried about what you're hearing because I tested the levels I have my headphones. I'll show you those here in a minute, my two headphones. So I have one set of headphones plugged in to channel one right here. And this is the headphone output for channel one right there, and it's on. These are off, should be all the way off. And I have the ability to have three more sets of headphones. So if I had four guests using channel one, two, three, and four, then I could each, they each could have headphones which is really cool. So let's say that I had someone in the studio with headphones and I'm just producing, right? I'm doing a live stream, a, a podcast for someone. I'm not on camera. I'm not in the actual podcast, but I'm the guy bringing in phone calls. I'm the guy that's monitoring everything. Um, if they have headphones on, I can hit solo on my channel. And I'm not gonna do it right now. And I can hit solo on their channel. And when both of those are on, I could talk secretly just to that person. So if it was time to go to a break or if it was time for them to stop tapping, the, the, like my wife will do a lot, she'll tap the microphone stand and it, it, it's a wood table underneath that. And so um, if she had headphones on, and we don't use headphones in the studio, but if she had headphones on, I could just touch solo on her, solo on my microphone, and I could whisper her, Shannon, please stop tapping the microphone stand. And of course you would look at me and you would probably notice something going on on camera, but you wouldn't hear anything. So that's great. So I could solo everybody during the break if we're just showing something and we could be having a conversation. I could unsolo everybody and the conversation would be over and we could go live. So then you have USB channel and then these two channels are really cool. You can see one has a picture of the phone and that is an input that I can bring a phone in. And here's my cable right here for that. I'll bring it up here. So if I wanted to bring a phone guest in, I would plug this lightning cable in to my phone. Right now I have a lightning port plugged in to show you video from my phone. But if I wanted to bring a guest in, this would be the input. They would get stereo music. I would get audio from their, um, their phone. And I have settings in here to adjust for different EQs and the ability to put effects even on all of the channels, including the phone channel. And then I'd bring their volume up um, and um, I could talk to them privately by hitting my solo button and their solo button. And then I could bring their volume up when we're ready to go live with them. And then obviously you would hear them if we were doing a, a call-in guest tonight or if I was in a podcast and I'm just recording because you can record this big button if I hit record right now. I'm now recording everything going to the Rodecaster Pro. And I have the ability to set it up so it records every single channel, including the things I play on the pads. 
So when I'm all done, I have all the channels. I have channel one, two, three, four. I have the USB channel if I play anything from my from my desktop computer or if I bring in a Skype guest. If I bring in a phone guest, I'll have them on a channel. Then I also have a Bluetooth channel and the Bluetooth channel I can connect to. So if I wanna play my TV behind me um, and play games on my PC and run it through my JBL speakers, I literally can bring them in through Bluetooth. I could also bring, put my, I could attach my phone on Bluetooth. So I could have my wife's phone plugged into this channel and I could have um, my phone plugged into Bluetooth and I could bring in two guests in a live show. I could have guests two waiting to come on and I could talk to them privately with this right here. I can mute each one of these channels, but one of the cool firmware updates is what you can do by soloing two channels. I can talk to those people. Now that's only through channel one. So you'll have to have your headphones in channel one and your microphone in channel one. And that's how I roll in the studio. So the Rodecaster Pro comes out of the back two channels and you can see them there on the far right. They go into the HOSA. Channel one goes to my speakers and my subwoofer. And actually they go to my subwoofer first and then they come from the subwoofer to the right and left speakers. And there again is my right speaker and my left speaker. If I go to channel three, which it's in right now, that comes in to my ATEM, and that comes in to channel one, and channel one in my ATEM, I'll try to keep my microphone close to me tonight. Channel one is that first input, and channel two is a backup input, um, and that back input, input is coming out of headphone channel four, and that's just a safety valve in case something dies and I need sound, I can bring up the preamp on headphone four and bring that into my live show on mic input number two. Now, if I switch over to channel two, channel two goes in to that converter. And if you remember, I'm converting right now. That converter converts the signal from my camera, which is Filmic Pro. You're seeing it right now as I tour the studio. I also can feed audio from my Rodecaster Pro into that converter. And so if I wanted to plug the other end of this tonight into my EOS R, and here is my EOS R right there, camera one, this is it. If I wanted to record my EOS R tonight, I could just plug this into my EOS R, and then I could record in the HyperDeck, which I'm not doing that. But if I'm in a live event and I wanna get a 4K recording of my EOS R and, um, hand that off to a guest so everybody that speaks, I have a 4K recording waiting for them on a disc. I can do that and I can feed them audio through my Rodecaster Pro. So I can get a nice mix for that live event, check it in my headphones. And again, here's my headphones for my Rodecaster Pro. Pop these puppy on and I could check the mix, make sure everything's really, really good. Then I could come over here if I wanted to record in my Rodecaster Pro. And these go into the Rodecaster um, Extreme or the ATM Mini Extreme, and they have a headphone jack now. And so I can actually take these headphones and I can monitor um, with these headphones what's playing right now in the ATM for this live broadcast. So I can check that out as well. And those hang right here underneath my monitor. So I can grab those and put them on before I go live in a show. So that's an overview of the four inputs for XLR microphones, and all four of them have phantom power. So there's four preamps. All four preamps for channel one, two, three, and four have phantom power. And then you have the USB input, gets its signal from your computer, and you can plug that into a Macintosh, you can plug that into a PC, um, and you could get a signal. Um, you have the pads and their volume right here. You have Bluetooth volume right there, and you can just turn that on and hook up to it. And then you can plug in um, this adapter, and it's a TRRS um, output from the Rodecaster Pro, so you'll have to have a TRRS. And if you don't know what that is, it has three little bars. Um, let me set this down, and I'll show you.
So I'll take this off. And TRRS has three lines. And this is a TRRS adapter that you get with your iPhones to plug in the older ear, earbuds. And um, so I took this adapter and I attach it like that. And then this will plug into the lightning input in my iPad or my iPhone. So I could bring in, if I have um, call enable on my iPad, I could bring in a caller from my iPad or I could bring a caller in from my iPhone. So I don't have this hooked up tonight. I literally have it plugged into HDMI so I can show you guys the studio. And then obviously I have a USB coming out of my laptop and that's the Asus um, ZenBook Pro. I love this laptop because it has the ability um, this is going to mess me up, but I'm going to do it anyway so you guys can see this. Um, there you go. So it has an extra screen you can see right there. Um, and the reason it's popping in and out is I had everything set up so that I could show my desktop. And so it popped on and popped off again. So I have the USB coming out into the Rodecaster Pro. I also have a USB cable coming out of my laptop into my ATEM. Um, and that ATEM Extreme ISO is right here. And you can see I have channel one on, and that's what I'm talking to you guys in right now. And then when I cut to our sneak peek tonight, I have audio follow video and my HyperDeck goes in right here. And now I'm not using audio on my phone right now, but if I had my phone audio turned on, um, you, you would be getting audio from me and my phone. And I hope you're not getting audio from me and my phone. If you are, I apologize. So, um, I think I have it set to analog in only, so you shouldn't be getting that. So, and that's inside the dip switches that are on the side right here of this converter. And um, I can change it from audio from the HDMI to audio from the inputs. And the two XLR or quarter inch inputs that go in right and left are right there on the side of that. Um, so you can see the HDMI input and you can also see the right and left input on that. So, okay, let's cut back to my camera, set this down. Um, and I wanna go into the stream tonight and see if there's any questions. So let me turn my phone back off. And I'm gonna unplug it so I can see the chat because I am using mix effects on my iPad tonight. So let me get back in the chat and see who's here. Um, we've got Jared Scott, good to see you. We've got Mr. Safe Moon, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know where you're from if you haven't said that already. Um, and um, we'll be taking some questions here in a little bit, but I wanted to give you kind of a tour of the Rodecaster Pro and the different tools. So again, just to give you a real quick review, right? Rodecaster Pro is the center audio piece of my studio. I use it for recording in here live. I use it for podcasting. I could do an audio podcast through it. I can do an audio or video podcast by bringing the Rodecaster Pro into my ATEM Mini um, Pro, which I have here on my desk. I'm not using it currently because I'm now using the live stream tool I'm using in my studio is my Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini um, Extreme ISO. So I could record all of the, the video inputs on my um, ATEM. I could also record the program, which you're seeing right now. This is the program that you're, you're checking out here. So any switching I would do, it could record that and it would also record um, the other tracks, and I could bring it into DaVinci Resolve later, or I could even bring those files into Adobe Premiere, and I could edit them in Adobe Premiere. So I have two headphones. I have the headphones that go into my Rodecaster Pro, but also to monitor audio in the studio. I also have a set of headphones to listen to what is going in the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, just to make sure I have good audio for a live stream or good audio from my for my recording. So I would really suggest that you have a set of headphones um, for your Extreme or your Extreme ISO. There is not a headphone jack on the ATEM Mini or the ATEM Mini Pro or the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. That's sad. That's one of the things that many of us wanted to see changed. 
And that's another reason why I have the Extreme Pro ISO because I want them to be able to monitor and just make sure. Now, don't get me wrong, I can turn on the audio meters on every channel, but that doesn't let me know if there's some weird noise or a weird echo. And if I'm not monitoring the chat, um, then I would be in trouble if someone was trying to tell me that the audio was double or something like that, it would be too late. Now, if I was recording ISO tracks, which I'm not tonight, I'm only recording the program, I could go back and maybe fix that issue later and then re-upload the video, but I'm just rolling live tonight. So Rodecaster Pro, four mic inputs. I can bring a phone in through the uh, little jack, or I can bring it in through Bluetooth. I could have two different speakers, or I could be playing a um, some music, right, from my Bluetooth um, device, and I could also be playing uh, or listening to a guest or talking to a guest on the other channel, or vice versa. So it's really Really versatile, and I love that. The one thing I've shared is I wish it had one more channel because I've had four guests in the studio before, and a lot of times I, I want to be in the headphones. I want to produce, be able to talk to the guests with headphones on, and when that happens, I have to just give them mic one, mic two, three, and four, and I have to just produce mixing, but I don't have the ability to do a lot of the other things that we're talking about, like talk to them privately um, so again, but you may not do every one of your audio events with headphones on uh, right now. I do not have my headphones on. Um, I would, if I was in a conversation on zoom or, uh, any other, um, software that you want to have conversations with other people, a zoom meeting, or you could go to Google, uh, meetings, all of those different things. And, um, you would probably use your headphones. Now I could turn my speakers on quietly but I like to have headphones on because then I have that person right in my ears. So, so the Rodecaster Pro has the ability to have four headphones, four microphones, XLR. You cannot, I've learned just recently that you can't really get another mic out of that um, phone channel unless you were to run it through a preamp because this only has four mic preamps on it in channel one, two, three, and four. There isn't a microphone preamp on that phone channel because the phone has its own preamp built in. And when I hook my phone up and I get a caller in, my phone already has the ability to send a amplified signal from it. You can get a small preamp and create one more mix into your Rodecaster Pro. And I may be doing that, um, we'll see, to give me that fifth microphone. That would also give me another set of headphones. But the downside of that, I have to have one more set of software open to control that most of those type small devices are designed to run through the software. So I'm doing some research right now to find a simple solution just to get a microphone and a headphones and have two, two volumes. And I'm sure I'll get some suggestions tonight in the chat on how to do that. So that's perfectly fine. So let's just take a minute to take a break here. Let me get a drink here, a coffee. So that's the Rodecaster Pro right? So I have one microphone plugged in tonight that I'm using. The other one's off. It's in channel four and it's a, um, this is a dynamic microphone. So it does not need phantom power. And the other little audio technica, um, platform microphone is actually phantom power. It, it's a dyna, um, excuse me, a condenser microphone. So it needs phantom power and I could switch to that right now. You could hear it. So let me do that. So that microphone is on right now. So you're not hearing my sure. You're hearing a microphone about, this is the downside of it. It's gonna pick up some room reverb because it's about, um, I don't know, uh, 21 inches away from me. So I would scoot forward if I was gonna use that microphone. So I'll bring my sure microphone back up. And how do I know it's working? I'm watching the audio signal on the front of the Rodecaster Pro because it has meters. And I'm also watching in my monitor for the audio meters as well. And then the monitor that I have right above this Canon 5D Mark IV, it also has an audio meter on it. So I know that I'm getting audio because I have meters on my port keys BM5 monitor and that can be turned on or off. And that's really cool if you're live streaming because I know the audio is working. And so that's why I like to use this camera and that monitor for my live stream. So again, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of the Rodecaster Pro. It has the ability to play audio in the room for some live mixing 
Um, I can also record to it. The, uh, the nice thing about recording is I can open up the software on my laptop. And well, let's look at that right now. Let me uh, make a change here real quick. And I will show you that software. Let's go to Macro One here. And let me open up that software on my desktop here. Find my mouse. And because I changed monitors, everything is messed up right now. So let me switch back here real quick. And I'll try to figure out what's going on here with my desktop. Turning off that second um, monitor on my laptop that I was demoing you guys. So let me bring up the Rodecaster Pro software here. It also made my icons very tiny, so <laughs> there it is. So the I'm looking at <laughs> these tiny little icons. Okay, let me switch back to, I mean, and again, I'm using, let me show you. My macros are right up here. So I'm gonna push this macro right here for Super Source One. And there you have it. So there is the Rodecaster Pro software. So if I wanted to bring in that recording that I did tonight, just when I pushed record just a few seconds ago, when I was showing you the Rodecaster Pro, I pushed that record button, it went red, and um, it's green right now to let me know that there's a disc in it ready to record, and it records to a micro mini um, SSD card. And so if I wanted to look at my podcast, I click on that button right here. There's two folders. Here's all the pads. I can have different banks. Um, up to eight different banks of pads. So I could have um, eight times, um, I think it's eight pa eight banks. So you do the math, there's um, eight pads and you could have eight different shows. So I could have one for my wife's podcast, one for my live stream, one for my podcast, one for someone else who I'm recording in the studio or going to their location. And I could have all of their intro and outro ro reels already ready to go. That's another reason why I love the Roadcaster Pro. but. If I wanted to bring in my podcast, I switch this little icon on. I'm not gonna do it right now because if I flip this switch, it goes out of live mode, which I'm using the Rodecaster Pro right now, and it goes into communicating as, a, um, as an interface. So now I can bring that information in, those files, right into my laptop. I don't even have to unplug the SD card. And they come in in a WAV format, not MP3. I could change it to MP3 if I wanted to, but they come in wave and then I can edit those. And so I won't turn that on right now, but if I did, it would show me all of the different um, podcasts I've done. And it would also show me um, how big those files are and I could bring them all in or just one podcast, whatever it is. So back to the sound pads. So that's another reason why I have the Rodecaster Pro is because of the easy integration, the ability that I can play sounds um, obviously, you need to have license to those sounds that you play, and the ones that come from Rodecaster Pro are just sound effects, and um, I think it says on the screen, so if I was to click on this button right here, so I got a rim shot, I have crickets, I have um, my wife's um, intro music is up here on the top pad. So, and again, my music is on the bottom right pad. So I can access those right now if I wanted to, and that's amazing. So the other thing I wanted to share with you guys tonight before we move on and I give you the sneak peek of um, lesson number three and tell you what's happening with the HyperDeck series, um, I want to show you kind of my auto, my editing process. So let me bring up, this, this is the sneak peek that you're gonna see here in just a few minutes. And um, these are my audio tracks down here. I can, this is Adobe Premiere. I can make my audio tracks bigger. Um, I can use the bottom arrow to zoom um, in and out that way. I can go in and out this way and make these tracks bigger. <coughs> So 
I can edit this audio right now in Premiere Pro, and now Premiere Pro has added some extra features. So if I go up on the top here, I'm in the edit folder. If I go over here to audio, it's gonna bring up the audio page, and now I have the ability, if I hit play right now, um, and I have this on, so you're gonna hear this. Just rearranging some things here. <coughs> So if I hit play, it's going to play those tracks. And you can see the meters work going right here. Then if I open up this little left arrow right here on the top, it brings up the effects panel. And I can drop effects on the master channel. That's all of the audio playing. So if I had four different layers of video and I had my intro music and then I had my voiceover, um, all of that would play through that master channel and I can drop in from Adobe Premiere. I can drop in all of these specs. I could drop in reverb. I could drop in an equalizer. So let's say I want a parametric EQ. I could drop that in. It's right here now on the master channel. I can double click on it. And now it's opened up my EQ. I could do right now a high pass filter because I don't want any of the low frequencies to rumble in my track. And I can raise and lower this. So if I wanted to bump it or drop it, I can. And so I have this parametric EQ. I have presets. And so I do a lot of my pre-editing on my videos before I ever release them. Even my wife's podcast and anything else that I do, if I go shoot a project for a client, I'm going to bring it into Adobe Premiere. I'm going to make sure that I do some basic editing inside Adobe Premiere just to get all my audio levels ready and um, fix any problems. If there's a pop or a click, I'll bring in um, things, in, tools in Adobe Premiere. And then when I get serious about releasing the audio, I'm gonna go down here to the audio track, right? And I wanna edit this audio track right here. And I'm gonna go up here to edit in Adobe Audition and you're gonna watch Adobe Audition is gonna open up right here on top of Adobe Premiere. It brings in my audio track, and now Adobe Edition has lots of features. That's some really good um, tools to fix audio if there's popping or clicks and all that stuff. And I'm not going to go in and do a whole audio um, uh, audition training tonight, but I just want to let you know that this is where I typically go. And a lot of times I will render my final video, and then I'll bring in the whole master track into Adobe Editions. If I have specific problems and I can't solve them in Adobe Premiere, I will bring them into Adobe Audition and I'll fix them there. Now, here's the thing, right? Listen to this carefully. If I hit save after I edit something in Adobe Audition, guess what it does? When I close Adobe Audition, so if I was to just bring this little section up right here, I did that by left clicking and dragging my mouse left to right, if I wanted to bring that audio level up, just that piece right there, and you can see it go up. So I'll bring it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna go up here and hit File. I'm gonna hit Save. And now I'm gonna close this. And that literally just updated the audio in Adobe Premiere. That's why I love Adobe products. That's why I use them. I'm constantly bouncing back and forth from Adobe Premiere into Adobe Audition. And then when I just want an audio release of my wife's podcast, when I get the video all edited and I final, I do the final rendering, I'll bring the audio into Adobe Audition and I'll actually release it in Adobe Audition. And I'm gonna talk about that later in a deeper dive into my audio processes here in the studio. So again, that's the Rodecaster Pro. That's how I bring um, audio in to um, my A10 Mini um, into my laptop, right? So if I do record the ISO tracks, I would be editing those in Premiere Pro. If I wanna replace something, um, I can bring in a wave track from just my voice from my Rodecaster Pro. So if I wanted to right now, I could hit record and be recording everything that we're doing live, um, but I'm already getting recording from the ATEM Mini Pro tonight, so I don't need to do both. But I could record my voice in the Rodecaster Pro. I can do a voiceover right now on the, um, the tracks here in Adobe Premiere, because again, this is channel one. I could turn my volume up. I could go into the software right here and I could record on this bottom channel. 
and watch it go live right here. Hi, this is Keith. I just want to invite you to the HyperDeck series, and I thank you for being a part of this release. We are in the HyperDeck series. Stop. And then there's my audio track right there I just recorded in all its glory. And so I could right click on it, edit that clip in Adobe Audition, open up Adobe Audition. I can look at the levels and go, I want to bring all the levels up, sweep across it with my mouse, bring all those levels up. It's a little hot right there. I can go up here to effects. I can go down to amplitude, compression. I could drop in a hard limiter. And that hard limiter opened up on my other screen here. So let me drag it over so you can see it. I know that this is a little hot. And so I know that's at minus about 3.4. So I'm going to bring this down to 3.4, 3.3, just to demo this. I'm going to hit apply. Watch what happens to this part of the audio right there. It shaved off just a little bit of that. I could also drop in a compressor. But again, that's as deep as I want to dive tonight. So let's switch back to our main camera here. And I'm back. So again, there's so much that I can do here in the studio because everything's integrated. So if I just want to do an audio podcast and call, have a call-in guest right here in my studio, I can pop my headphones on, I can have them call in, and I could do an audio podcast, take that WAV file into my laptop, mix it in Adobe Audition, and release it. If I wanted to record like I am tonight on my ATEM Mini, I can take all of that video footage when I'm done, pull the SSD drive off. Or I could actually transfer those files through the Ethernet as well if I used FileZilla, but I just unplug my SSD drive and I plug it into my laptop. And then I can take those files into Adobe Premiere. I can edit the audio. If, I don't, if there's something that's too hot or too quiet, I can edit that real quickly. And then I could just release the audio of that or I could release the video of that. And that's kind of a breakdown of how I use the Rodecaster Pro in the studio. So let's just pause for a minute. Let me catch up with you guys here. Um, so I think I've said hi to everybody I see on right now. Uh, Mr. Safe Moon, I'm not sure if I saw you or said hi to you early. Thank you for joining me. Um, Bill Serino, how much recording time do you get on those pads? That's a great question. I think it's limited to so many minutes. I will find that out and put it in the notes tonight. I don't have the answer to that on the top of my head. But in a recent firmware this year, you can actually loop on those. So I could record music, then I could record my voice. So you can actually do some pretty cool things on those pads. I don't do any looping, but that would be great for like an intro reel where you wanted to have your music and then you wanted to do your voiceover. I just do all that right in Adobe um, Premiere Pro. But if you were live somewhere using the Rodecaster Pro, you could literally do a quick intro for someone um, and um, take their intro music, put it on the pad right from the SD card, and then you could do a voiceover for them or have them do a voiceover right there on a microphone before you went live in their podcast. So it's a great tool. Um, so I just saw that question. I thought I would throw out an answer um, right now um, to you, and um, we'll come back to some questions here in a minute. Let me check our time. Okay. It is 4.48, so that's kind of an overview of the audio. I don't really want to go any deeper about that tonight, but I will answer some questions here shortly. I do want to talk to you just a little bit about um, what's coming up, and that's the HyperDeck series, and um, I'm very excited about it. I've had some clients on the phone with me. It's really hard to, when you're, when you're on the phone with a client or you're doing a Zoom call, to really help them understand all of the steps because the questions can bounce around. So what I did is I did six videos and I'm gonna do a bonus video, which we'll talk more about in the weeks to come. But in those six videos, I'm taking the HyperDeck from it completely unplugged, like you get it out of the box. I then plug it into my A10 Mini Pro in the second lesson. And then in the third lesson, which you're about to see a clip, I take you to Black Magic Design site. I talk about all the things that you should have plugged in and how it should be integrated in your studio in lesson two. I review that in lesson three, which you're going to see right now. And then after that, I take you into the software and I show you all the buttons and things that you need to set up inside your HyperDeck and 
inside the ATEM control software to make sure that your ATEM Mini Pro or your ATEM Mini ISO, your ATEM Mini Extreme, your Extreme ISO, and all the other controllers that you can integrate a HyperDeck with, I want to make sure that you know how to get them talking. So you're going to actually see right now me use Mix Effects with my HyperDeck. Even though Mix Effects through Adam Toe is not integrated yet with a HyperDeck, if you have um, Auto Roll set, which you're going to see in the video series on the HyperDeck, if you have Auto Roll set, I can make a macro, I can launch it from my, um, my Mix Effects. And as soon as I switch to that channel, it knows that if the ATEM is hooked or the HyperDeck's plugged into that channel, it's going to auto roll because all of that is set up inside your control software of your ATEM Mini, your ATEM Mini Pro, your ATEM Mini ISO, and you know the list. But you can use a HyperDeck with the Mini. It takes up two channels if you want to use the, the key graphics. So if you want to have the main channel, which is really the alpha, and you want to have the key channel, you have to use up two inputs on your ATEM minis, um, whichever one you have. But Mix Effects will switch to a channel that's attached to the HyperDeck. And if it's set to auto roll in the control software, it's going to roll. And so I want to show you a sneak peek of lesson three of my HyperDeck series. But before I show that, let me just tell you this. As soon as we come back, I'm going to tell you when you can watch lesson one of the HyperDeck, and it may be sooner than you realize. So stay tuned. I'm going to hit, I have a macro right here that's actually entitled, let's see, where is it at? It says um, roll lesson three right there. And it's a macro that I program in my ATEM, and I'm going to roll it right now using the, um, the lesson three button. And then I'm going to mute my mic. I still have to go to the mute on my Rodecaster Pro. Um, so I could have auto muted the main microphone, but I'm running audio to it as well through my HyperDeck. So I have to mute that manually on my Rodecaster Pro, which is another reason why I love it because the button's right there. So let's roll this sneak peek. It's about three minutes, so stay tuned. Well, welcome back to Life Journey Production Studios. My name is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me again. We are in the HyperDeck series, and this is lesson three. We're going to look at getting it all integrated with your ATEM mixer. It could be an ATEM Mini. It could be a Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, Mini Extreme, which I think the Mini needs to be dropped, or the Extreme ISO, or any of the other switchers by Blackmagic Design. You should have the SDI converted coming out of the HyperDeck, both channels, the key and the alpha or the key and the fill, and those should be plugged into your switcher device ready to go. You should also have a USB cable plus C plugged into the back of your HyperDeck and into your PC or your Macintosh, as well as it hooked into the network. So an Ethernet cable plugged into a switch or to your hub so that you have that mixer, right, the ATEM also hooked into the same network so they can communicate over the internet or, or over the ethernet. So now what we want to do is we want to go to Blackmagic Design's website. We want to download the HyperDeck software and we want to get everything integrated using the control software and the HyperDeck software and the setup software. So let's switch to SuperSource here. And there you see the Blackmagic Design website. Now this is the main site. You can see it's blackmagicdesign.com but you're gonna to want to go to the support page. And so we're going to click over here to the support page. So up here you see product re, um, reseller and support. We're gonna click on support. And when you click on support, you get this new screen, right? And uh, all of these different choices. And you're gonna watch this change because we're gonna go over here to recorders and click on that. And once we click on that, you don't really see anything change. But if you look right here, as I click these, you see these different files below here changing. So we're going to click up here again on recorders. And this looks a little different from the pictures that are on the product page. But don't let you throw you. We're just looking for the, the recorder um, deal here. And then you don't see it right away because you're going to have to scroll down in this column. And if you scroll down right here, you're going to see the HyperDeck 7.1.3 update, and then you're going to click on either 
Windows or Macintosh, whichever you have, and I am a Windows user, so second choice is mine. I click on that, and then I have this page right here, and this page is asking me to register, but I can just go down here to download only, click on that, and then when this is downloading, and you're gonna see it populate down here in just a second, there it goes. I'm gonna click on um, show in folder when it's done uploading, and it's gonna pop over the folder and then once this is done, watch what happens on my PC. It probably will happen this way on your PC as well. As soon as that's downloaded, and I have a bunch of them down here because I've been practicing, there it is, it pops open. You're gonna double click on this install item and after everything's installed, um, you can close this window. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna bypass that part. Um, close all these. I'm gonna go down here to start. I also have the icon down here on my desktop, but I'll show you where to find it. You're gonna go down here to start on the bottom of your desktop, and then you're gonna scroll down until you see the Blackmagic Design folder right here, and then you're gonna scroll down until you see this um, item right, HyperDeck, right here, and then you can drag that down to your bottom row. I already have done that, so we wanna double click on that. And that's gonna open up the control software. And if you have. So there's a sneak peek. So let me tell you, tonight at 5.15, right after this live stream, lesson one is going live. Two days later, lesson two. Two days after that, lesson three, which you just saw a sneak peek, which goes very in depth into the software and integrating everything and then um, there's six all together videos, so you do the math. One will release tonight, and then obviously every two days, so 12 days from tonight, all of them are gonna be live. And then on that, after they're all live, we're gonna actually record together. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna record in a live event part of that final lesson, which is gonna be a bonus lesson on my Hy HyperDeck series. And so have some special things going that night. So if you want to not only just be in a live event, right, with me asking questions, you're going to want to be here 12 weeks um, from tonight because that night we're going to do something special for that session. Now, I'm going to have some stuff already, but literally that live that night, a portion of that is going to become um, the bonus session. And um, a shout out to all of you guys that participate that night. I have some special things planned for you and integrating, you know, uploading videos, which is what's happening. I've set the release already. It's already uploaded. So lesson one of my HyperDeck series is ready to go. Uh, the first two lessons are not super long. Um, and um, that one you just saw, uh, Sneak Peek, is a little bit longer um, because it's more into the software showing you Blackmagic's design site. And I try to tell you exactly where all the cables go. And I just want to make sure that if you purchase a HyperDeck or you have one, that you know how to use it. And Part of that bonus is gonna be, we're gonna talk about how to use it to bring in your iPad or to bring in another camera. And I'm gonna bring in a mix effects right now. So what I'm gonna do, I've showed you the video. So if I hit record on my HyperDeck one time, it switches to record mode. And because I have a monitor up here, I can tell you that mix effects and my macros are now live through here. So that's channel seven because that's what I have plugged in. But it's also gonna play on channel eight because when you're just playing a video without any um, key channel or an alpha channel is another thing it's called, um, you don't have to um, worry if seven or eight, if you cut to them, they'll both um, show the screen. So let me just cut to channel seven real quick, but we're gonna bring it into Super Source here in a second. There's mix effects. And I did a transition with the logo. That logo is in my media player, and um, I just transitioned to mix effects. Now, the iPad doesn't fill up the screen. That's one thing to realize. And so let me cut back. I know you can hear me, but you can't see me. And that's what makes SuperSource so nice, right? I could do picture in picture, right? If I cut back to this, I could just bring picture in picture on, but I have all my macros set up tonight and mix effects set up to bring in super source. Now, the super source I'm gonna bring in now, I'm going to um, show you the iPad so you can see um, the, the, the different uh, choices here. Sorry, can't talk. You can see number seven is my outro. 
Number eight is a transition still. Um, number six is uh, roll lesson three, which you guys just saw. Number five was roll my intro. That was my countdown clock. I had a still image up until right about seven minutes and five seconds before the hour, and I hit that button. The top one is Super Source 1. Now I'm going to tap on button 2, which is Super Source 2. And you've already seen Super Source 1. Super Source 1 is just my desktop right there, right, and me. Super Source 2 is three windows. And I have Super Source 3 set up to my multi-view. Um, and I have a button right here. It's a switch that switches between this monitor behind me and multi-view, so multi-view is up now. So if I wanna show my audience my multi-view um, and have it on the screen and not behind me, I have a switch right now, so I have the input coming in, right? And then I have it split. And that split is a switch, so I can switch to this monitor or I can switch to an input on my ATEM Mini Pro. So I'll switch that back. And because these boxes are um, switchable, right, in SuperSource, I could do that in Adam Tao's mix effects um, here as well. And I haven't tried this yet, so let's see if I can figure this out live. Um, let's see. I have audio macros, um, upstream key, SuperSource. So I clicked on SuperSource. Then I want to change input number three. And if I click on box three, it's going to be assigned right now to my um, camera eight. And I want it assigned to, um, it says it's signed right now to camera eight. No, six, sorry. There we go. So I was able to switch box three in SuperSource. Never done it, never done it before. I waited to do this live, and I was able to do that by this little super source here. So you can see I can go up and down, and here's all the presets. I have already have a macro set that used this preset that you see on the screen right now. There's three boxes. You can have up to four boxes open in super source. And down here, it tells me box one is assigned to channel three in my ATEM. Box two is assigned to channel four. And now box three, it's the channel assigned to channel seven. And because I'm running into a converter out of my la iPad into channel seven um, from my hyperdeck, remember I come out of my iPad or my iPhone tonight into my converter, out of the converter into the input in the hyperdeck. The hyperdeck has two outputs. Those are SDI outs. So it has an SDI input, which is where this Video signal that you see right there is coming from, and this is actually video from my iPad. So I could click to any program in my iPad. I could play a YouTube video through this. And if I, auto, if I turn the audio on, it will play audio during my podcast as well. So now that's converted out of the HyperDeck into my ATEM, and that comes into channel seven and eight. And I am showing you guys seven right now. And remember when I told you both channels will show you the same thing? unless you have an alpha channel in a graphic. So let's just click to eight and you just saw it. See how eight is live right now down there. I'll click back to seven and nothing's changed in that box. What happens if I choose input number four? That's my desktop. What if I chose input number one? There's that camera right there, right? So I can switch those live and I could be on my table. The one thing I can't do, and that's the reason I wanted the demo this mix effects and my roadcaster tonight, let's get rid of that, is because I still had to mute my audio or not talk in the middle of my video. So if I had sneezed or made any noise and I didn't mute that, there is no automation in the roadcaster Pro. And that's my wish. It's on my wish list for Christmas this next year is I would love to have some ability to control through macros, the Rodecaster Pro. So we'll now, we never know, I showed you the application. It's very simple. You can transfer files. I can add audio onto those pads and it'll automatically go onto the pads. So we know there's the ability. They've added some macro features in the new firmware 
I have not experimented with those, but I do know that you can create some macros, but I don't know yet if there's any mute capability. So I'll look into that and I'll report back to you because I do know that the beta right now, I think it's still in beta, has the ability to play around with macro buttons using those buttons. So again, I was able to switch to super source right now with you live. I can also show you box one, which is me. I could make box one right now, this camera. And obviously this is not focused and I, I just have this as a backup camera. It's really um, dark right now. Back to camera two, which is my main camera tonight. And then I could go to box number two and if I didn't want my desktop, right? Then I could switch to something else. So what else do I have live tonight? I do have camera three, let me flip that on. Again, I have my down camera, which is a 5D Mark III, it times out after 29 minutes. And so it is now live, so I could cut to camera three. And now you see this view of my desk, it's not perfectly straight, but you can see I have my ATEM, next to that I have my HyperDeck, next to that I have my uh, Stream Deck, and that's got my logo on it right now, and then I have my Rodecaster Pro, and just off camera, you have the Hosa right here. And so again, I can use SuperSource and live switch different inputs, so I don't have to switch super sources. If I only want three boxes, I can do it this way. If I wanna cut back to my macros, which I have to change screens and go to this super source, then I could have my desktop up there. And now that I know how to switch these in here, it's this simple. I'm gonna go to box number two, and now I wanna go to input seven. Oh, sorry. I just switched me up. So again, these are live edits, so buyer beware. There you go. So now you have me in one box and you have mix effects in the other box. So that's just kind of a real quick, I am running the show tonight from the macros on here, back to my macro page. And there's lots of other things in here. I'm just focusing tonight on the macros because I wanna be able to switch things live. So now's the point where uh, I want to just remind you that the HyperDeck series is to really help people hook up their HyperDeck. Let me cut back to me here. Um, let me use my macro, me and a logo. That's what I got this one called. And so I want to challenge you tonight to help me out and um, share the HyperDeck series to like it. Um, it's going to go live at 5.15 tonight, and it is 5.07. So we have just a few minutes for questions and answers, and I want to do that right now. So I'm going to unhook. Um, my iPad, I've got to go back to play mode because that's the way my macros are. So I needed to tell my HyperDeck to get ready to play videos. And then what I want to do is I'm going to turn off uh, mix effects here just for a second and go into my, um, my live stream. And I want to look at you guys' questions to see what we have here. So let me scroll up here. Lots of people live. I did answer some questions earlier from Indy, and you can read those up there. Um, let's see, do you know where those automatically save so I can duplicate them to put on the new computer running OBS? So I'm assuming you're talking about the files. So you download the software for the Roadcaster Pro, then you can open up the software, turn on that transfer button, and you can bring in all the files that way, or you can pull them off of the little SD card, SSD card. And that's in the back of the Rodecaster Pro, and it's one of those micros. And again, you don't have to have a really expensive card because this is audio, and audio doesn't need the same kind of megabytes per second that a SSD card needs. And so just keep that in mind. So you could just get them off the SD card, and then you could bring those into your laptop, put them in a folder, bring them into your Mac, put them in a folder. They're WAV files, and then you could, so that's a real high end. WAV file and you can then edit it down later for video production or even make it into an MP3 if you're just releasing it as a podcast. So um, so I answered those questions. Let's go down here. Um, great to have uh, Bill here from Chicago. I think I said that earlier. UK, great, that's awesome, man, I'm so excited. I don't think I've had anybody here from the UK, so shout out to the UK. We've got Freddie here from Venezuela, um, just got here, you're bringing 
in the iPhone, NDI or cords. The iPhone comes in. So again, my iPhone, if I use it through my Rodecaster Pro, I'm gonna come through Bluetooth or just this. That's just gonna bring an audio. The other thing I did is I'm bringing the iPhone, not through NDI, I'm going through my HyperDeck by using the adapter, right? So I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I'm using the Lightning adapter to HDMI, and then because the HyperDeck only has SDI input in, and it's a 6G input, which means it can record up to 4K, 60 frames per second, 422, which means less compression, more ability to um, make corrections and do color correcting later because that extra dot two gives you way more information in the blacks and the highlights. Anyway, that has to be converted. So I'm coming through a SD, uh, SDI or HDMI to SDI 6G converter by Blackmagic Design. And that again is in my HyperDeck series. Then this goes into the back of my HyperDeck from that converter into the input. So the back of my HyperDeck, I have that input. And so I could record just what I'm showing on my iPhone, but I can also show it in the live stream or in a recording in my ATEM because my HyperDeck comes in the channel in seven and eight. So it's an input. So we think the HyperDeck is just for playing videos or motion graphics, but you can also bring in a video device and not just play videos. And that's what I think makes the HyperDeck super cool. And that's why we're going to do a bonus video together on this whole issue right here, because it's going to take a half a live stream to do that correctly. So, um, so no NDI cords. Uh, let's see, do you stream on Facebook too? I've done some Facebook streams, but I'm only streaming on YouTube right now. I have the ability to go to my stream deck, um, not my stream deck, sorry, to go to my streaming bridge and then plug it in through my cam link into my PC. And so I have a cam link right here. If you don't know what those are, this will convert. So if I wanted to go HDMI from my iPhone into my laptop, this cam link by Elgato will convert HDMI to USB-C and I can broadcast that through OBS. But because I'm using my laptop when I'm doing live videos, right? It's the other hub in my studio. That's what I'm streaming. Um, to watching, you know, watching and doing all the stuff with my laptop. I'm not streaming from it. I'm streaming from the ATEM. But I do need to make sure that I don't take up more CPU. So I'll use my, um, when I go live in both locations, I will go to my PC and then I'll use OBS to stream from there if I want to, or I could go directly um, from that camera into Facebook. So We'll look at that. I have a plan to do that in my wife's More About Birth podcast live, and that's a week or two weeks from tomorrow. And I'm gonna actually be streaming on her YouTube channel and her Facebook page at the same time. That's the first time I'm gonna do it in a live event, but I am gonna do a couple of rehearsals before then. So I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes. So um, let's see, cool border around your two pictures. Did you do that with ATEM Mini? Um, so the borders that you saw um, that I'm using are only available by either doing a graphic on the foreground, and I've done that with my Adam Tao um, interview, and I had his name there and my name there, or you could use your downstream keys, but you're limited to how many graphics you can put on the screen when you're using SuperSource. And so we have four upstream keys, which lets us do all that cool stuff, but you're limited on how many boxes you can draw. So again, you can do that boxes around a couple things in your DVEs, but super source, you'd have to put a foreground graphic or a background graphic either way and create that in like Adobe Illustrator. And I'm not gonna demo that tonight because we're running out of time. Our HyperDeck lesson one is gonna go live and then I'm gonna lose you guys. So um, let's go on. I'm sure it's probably one minute till the live um live release of my HyperDeck lesson one. And then two nights from tonight, you're going to see lesson two. So let me do one more question before we bust out of here. How much is the Rodecaster Pro and Extreme ISO? Well, the Extreme ISO is, I think, $1,300 United States money. And the Pro, I think, retails for right around $600. And you can buy um, kits from BSW, and they're kind of a radio broadcast company. Um, you can also 
do some looking on Adorama. They have some deals on the Rodecaster Pro. Um, and um, you can also use my Amazon associate links if you just want to get uh, a Rodecaster Pro. But anyway, there that's it's it's an investment. But you could get a Pro, an A10 Mini Pro, and not get the Extreme and have four inputs, get a HyperDeck, add a Rodecaster Pro, because that's how I started in my studio with this one microphone. So check that out. Um, let's see. Let's try to get a couple more questions in here. If I have a laptop connected to the ATEM, this is Freddie. Do I have to connect it to the RCP2? Um, yeah, you, you, you want to have a USB cable plugged into your, um, your Rodecaster Pro because it's an audio interface. That's super important, Freddie, because my laptop and my Rodecaster Pro are the hub. The Rodecaster Pro is the hub of my audio. So I've selected my Rodecaster Pro on my Windows PC as my audio source. So then when I go into a Zoom call, I can, I can use the Rodecaster Pro or because I'm feeding from the Rodecaster Pro in my ATEM, I could also choose my ATEM as an audio input and my microphone for um, Zoom. But I usually do all of that stuff through my Rodecaster Pro um, unless I'm trying to demo a bunch of stuff in a Zoom call. Um, and then I want, if I'm going to show my HyperDeck and all that stuff, then I want to get the audio from that, from my ATEM. And in, in Zoom, I'll just choose the ATEM as my audio source. And again, this is not a demo on Zoom, but I hope that answers your question. Then you also want a USB cable plugged into your ATEM because one, you can use it as a webcam. And that's true with the mini the Pro, the ISO, and the Extremes, both Extreme and Extreme ISO, they're all webcam capable. And at the same time, if you have the Extreme and Extreme ISO, you have another USB-C out. So you can have it plugged into a SSD drive for recording like I have it tonight. So in a Zoom call, I can use my ATEM as my web camera, and I can also record everything that's going through my ATEM at the same time. And that's what I'm doing tonight. Even though I'm not streaming through my laptop, I could bring up OBS right now and I could actually be able to see what you're seeing on in OBS because my USB-C cable is coming in from my ATEM. So again, I hope that answers your question. One of the advantages of the Extreme and the Extreme ISO Blackmagic Design ATEMs is that it has the extra inputs. It has two HDMI outs, which is great for routing things to monitors or into uh, using HDMI 2 out and routing it in back into your ATEM so you can show your multi-view, you can show your desktop because it's a switch. You can send anything to HDMI 2. In fact, right now, that monitor, I'm watching the program view out of my HDMI 2 out of my ATEM. So I have ATEM, HDMI out 1, right? And that's just going to my multi-view monitor. I can also send it back here right? But the second output, I like to see the program. So right now I'm feeding that to both of these monitors. So the monitor on this camera and the monitor on that camera right there, I can still see the program view right now, even though the way I have my lights set up, that camera looks dark and this camera looks bright. And I can switch that right now. Um, so I could make both these lights exactly the same brightness and I can switch back and forth but that camera adjustment's a little bit different here. I do not have this set to auto ISO. I was doing something yesterday and I didn't turn it back. So again, I hope that answers your question, Freddie. Um, hello, Keith, this is from Kevin um, from Maryland. Hey, bud, great to have someone here from the United States and Maryland, awesome. Um, and let's see, thank you. I see Adam on here, great, man. I'm glad you are liking Mix Effects, just joining stream. Great to have Adam. If you don't know who Adam is, you need to go back two weeks ago and watch my interview with him. He's the guy that designed Mix Effects. It's a complete redesign of the software, the control software. So, Adam, I just want you to know I hit my macros tonight, and because I had pre roll set or auto roll set on my HyperDeck, it worked fine. 
my outro tonight is going to be run from your software. And when I hit my outro button, it's going to switch through my macro to my outro video and it's automatically going to switch cameras. So a shout out to Adam Tao, who's on with us tonight. I am honored to have you on the channel. I hope your other event went great tonight because he had a live stream with someone else. And if you want to put in the notes, Adam, where you were, I would love to have people be able to go check out that live stream that you were a part of tonight, if it was a YouTube or a Facebook live. So great to see Adam. Mix Effect is working good, and he's starting to work on new um, things, like eventually integration with a Hyperdeck. His new update gave us some great features that came out day before yesterday, I think. I just updated that yesterday. So his um, firmware has already been updated twice since his release. So Thank you, Adam, for staying on top of those releases and working so hard to integrate it with all of the consoles. In fact, this new version fixes a lot of issues. Blackmagic Design loaned Adam a bunch of consoles and a shout out to Blackmagic Design for doing that. So again, I had to give a shout out to Adam. Um, let's see, I don't see... Uh... So, Hyperdeck Series, Freddy. Lesson one is live. It's six parts. We're going to do the seventh bonus together in 12 weeks. So over the next 12 weeks, all six of those versions, those lessons are going to come out. So you can watch lesson one tonight. In two nights, you can watch lesson two. Keep doing the math. Every two nights, another one's going to be released for two reasons. One, I want to get have a chance to promote those. I also want to give a chance for YouTube to be able to serve those up. I don't want to do those uploads all at one time. Um, I will upload them, but I'm going to time the release. And I'm still finishing um, the lesson two or three edit because I've been fine tuning that. And then um, I've already pre-recorded all the other lessons and most of them were mixed inside the ATEM. I just need to add some graphics and some arrows and maybe some B-roll when it will help you understand things even better. So I watch those a bunch of times and make sure that I'm adding the things and the details that you guys will need to be able to run the Hyperdeck together integrated inside your studio. And you can use the Hyperdeck with other mixing consoles. It just has the ability to communicate back and forth to the ATEM control software. And I, that's one of the coolest features I think you could have is to be able to do that and communicate back and forth. So, well guys, man, I tell you what, it was really cool to have all you guys on here. Um, I will upgrade my wiring diagrams. I have some more that are gonna be in the videos that are coming out to help you see kind of my wiring diagrams. So anyway, I thank you guys so much for tuning in live. We were able to kind of look at the Rodecaster Pro and how it integrates. So if you haven't watched the first half, go back and look at all of the things I talked about with the Rodecaster Pro. I even showed off the software. And I did some live mixing tonight from um, the Mix Effects. And I'm gonna turn the chat off here real quick and go back to Mix Effects. Um, and I'm gonna get ready to run my macro outro here, just FYI. Um, but I also have the chat up on my phone. Just so you know, I wanna do one more last check for any, um, any questions. So I apologize for the silence. It feels great not to hear my voice. <laughs> um, yeah, I have looked at the YOLO box. Um, it doesn't fit my needs, it's a great tool. Um, Again, it's a really cool tool because it's integrated, a monitor, the ability to stream to multiple locations. It has two inputs. Um, plus, you can add a USB video camera. I think it's still 720p. So YOLO Box is an option, but there's so much more I can do in expansion that I can do in my studio with the ability to show my desktop through an input. And it just goes on and on and on. So I love the Yolo box. I think it's a great tool. I've never had one, but I did hours upon hours of research because I have clients that I have to make recommendations to as well. And sometimes it's the right solution. So again, hey, if I missed your question, number one, I apologize. I want you guys to be able to go watch on my YouTube channel, right where you're at tonight, the Hyperdeck video, lesson one. Tune in two nights from now to do lesson two. And by the time I get back, you do the math, a number of those lessons will already be released 
and then some more after next Tuesday's live. So I have some other great topics for live in next week. Um, I'm also looking for some more guests to have on. I'm looking forward to that. And I have some new tools. I'm doing research this week, thanks to a suggestion that Adam Tao made um, when he was on with Aaron Parecki using OBS. So I'm going to look into that this week. So thank you so much for your input back to me. Thank you so much for tuning in live. And thank you for listening to this channel and subscribing and sharing it because that makes all the difference in the world to let, 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 let the YouTube algorithm know that those videos are available for people that want to learn about the Hyperdeck as that series is released. And if you know my channel, it's been a while since I've done an upload. Um, most of my channel has been live streaming recently, so it's going to get bombarded with these six videos. And then in week number 13, we'll have put together a lesson ourselves called the bonus Hyperdeck series lesson on integrating it with a video input in the Hyperdeck. And we're gonna demo that and tear that down so that everybody can see that diagram and exactly how that works. So I am Keith. This has been Life Journey Production Studios live on YouTube. If you're watching this delayed, thank you so much. Please list your questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer those. If you have any questions for Adam, go ahead and put those in the comments again tonight in the video. And if I don't know the answers, I will have Adam respond to some of those or give me answers and we'll keep you abreast of Mix Effects. Make sure you check it out. It's downloadable on the App Store. So check out Mix Effects. It only costs $49 and some change for the pro version, a one-time um, uh, pay payment. But you can also have a month free demo of the pro version, which is what I was using tonight. And it would be an amazing opportunity for you to play around with it um, and uh, try to run your ATEMs from it. And it's not hard at all. Thank you, Adam, for that app. So again, thank you so much for tuning in live. I'm going to go let you guys watch that other video or take a break and watch it. It's not live. It's just on my YouTube channel right now. And it has its own playlist. And I'm going to bring it to the very top as soon as I get off the air with you. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining me all over the world. Invite your friends. Let them know about the channel as well. And we'll keep exploring. We'll keep learning. We'll keep growing together. And we'll invite some people on the journey with us along the way live on video. So until then, I am Keith. And we will see you next Tuesday live or later tonight in Lesson 1 in the Hyperdeck. Thank you.